What is up, everybody? We are back doing a rookie mock draft. I think it's our second one, maybe third one, but it's definitely our first one since the NFL draft has passed. It's May 3rd. We're uh, about a week since the, or I guess only four or five days since the draft ended. And uh, we're going to do a super flex rookie mock draft. We're going to break it up into different videos. This video is going to be just round one. I'm joined by my brother, Brian. What's up, Brian? How's it going? Great. Let's get some drafting done. Get some drafting. And um, my sister-in-law, his his wife, she's in the background. She'll be drafting at one of the slots too. So she's there. Maybe you'll hear her voice like the, the woman behind the curtain type of thing, right? Um, hello, hello. <laughs> Bree, yeah, I was going to say Bree. Um, so yeah. I guess we'll get right into it. I mean, we'll see how much has changed. I was kind of thinking about it myself. Like, I haven't thought too much about... I, I have thought about the first round a lot, but beyond that, just like, what's really changed? It, it felt like the NFL draft really uh, put a damper a little bit on on the rookie mock draft. Just, you know, Charbonnet going where he went and guys not uh, getting drafted as high as we thought. So um, let me see if I can do it this way. Here we go. Um, Brian, you're at the 101, is that right? Uh, yep. Yep, Bree's at the 106, I'm at the 108. Brian will be making all the other um, odd picks. I'll be making all the other even picks, and we'll kind of just talk through um, how we would do it. So I'm going to start it up, and I think it's pretty obvious where we're going. Yeah. With the first pick. Yeah. Is, yeah. is there any... Um, <laughs> Will Levis. Is there any uh, – seeing where Anthony Richardson went now, is there any argument for him being the first overall pick in the Superflex League? I, I know we talked about that before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you can definitely make the case, but I still think – I don't know. I, I think you still got to go with Bijan, like how we've kind of talked about before. Like he's automatically worth more – than Anthony Richardson, or I'd say any of the quarterbacks, like just for what you could probably get for him to trade, mm -hmm. like in, or in a trade. So I don't know. We'll we'll have to see a little bit more. Everyone just assumes like he's going to be like this fantastic uh, talent. So you can't like go wrong with uh, that. Just like the perception, even if you don't think that, you should still take him there and then try and trade or trade your pick or something. You know. Yeah, right. like trade out of the 101. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could, I'm, I don't see why you couldn't get like multiple firsts for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, things. yeah, Bijan going, he went to the Falcons, which is like, I, I said it from like a team building point of view. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But um, the Falcons is like the best, one of the best places he could go to just because like, I think they had like the most efficient run game. Uh, last year in the NFL, they ran the ball like I, th I think you mentioned this, Brian. I think they were first overall in rushing, and then like third in, in running back rushes. Um, and they're just really good at running the ball, so you can't really argue. Bijan's going to put up like monster numbers for sure. Um, I'm going to take. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, uh, 559 rush attempts last year. I, don't, I think that might count quarterbacks, though. That's not just strictly running back, but. I remember it was like 450 or something like that just by running back. So, yeah, there's a crazy number of opportunity there. Sorry, Ty Tyler Algier. Yeah, I mean, he's still going to get carries. It's just, you know, he's going to oh, yeah. be one of those, like, you can't – he'll have a couple games where he scores a couple touchdowns or busts off a big run. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to maybe surprise anyone that's been following or maybe you, Brian. I'm going to take Richardson second only because um, – for the people, this is what I think will happen, you know, uh, in, in your rookie mock drafts. I think it's going to be Anthony Richardson taking second overall. I would take Bryce Young personally, um, but I'm not going to argue against Richardson. Him going forth to the Colts, kind of the perfect spot for him, you know. We talked about it. Their head coach was the guy who coached Jalen Hurts and turned him into, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, and if every, we have said it since – March, if everyone hits since February, if everyone hits, you know, this top in the first round or the top five, whatever, if everyone's hits, 
um, Richardson's gonna should be the 101, right? Um, but we just don't know if he is gonna hit. That's the problem. Yeah, so. definitely high risk. You know, some people are definitely like over overthinking it, like where mm-hmm. and just like there's no way he can't be good. And it's like, yeah, there's there's a lot of ways he cannot be good. You know, like we're just like so focused on you know the way we think he's gonna be good you know just as far as like all the rushing so yeah yeah, there's plenty of opportunities especially when you have like that high of expectations there's i mean the only way the only place to go is down you know yeah i think it's interesting like he didn't rush for a whole lot of yards in college i i mean he had like six seven hundred yards rushing but he wasn't like lamar lamar had like 15 1600 yards rushing Um, yeah his his uh you know the two full years or two his two last years in college like he he was oh, rushing really? for like no fifteen hundred one year and then sixteen hundred another like oh my god <laughs> yeah he was he was rushing for like a crazy amount of number or a re- amount of yards there was someone else that I'm trying to remember who someone else a mobile quarterback that's come out but um like Anthony Richardson I think had like six hundred yards rushing. So it is kind of interesting, but you do see the talent for sure. I'm just like when he does run, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, um, and it, yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of like what you say too, Mike. You know, like you, I know you play a lot for just like the upside and trying to get like those those studs kind of. And yeah. it's like yeah, he has like the athletic profile, but yeah, obviously we're gonna have mm-hmm. to wait to see it. But it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. Like if, and, if it actually goes down, but I really liked him just going to the Colts in general too. So they're, they're talking about him potentially like starting from day one. Like I think we all assumed, oh yeah, he'll sit for most of the year. But there's rumors out there like saying like, no, he could. I mean, they have Gardner Minshew, but yeah, I, I, it'd be pretty amazing if he starts day one. Um, all right, Brian, you're on the three. Who are you taking? Um. I mean, you still got to go quarterback here. Um, I know you like Bryce Young. I was actually, I, I was, I was hotter on uh, Stroud, and I even, I think I even talked about like, um, I don't know if you ever confirmed this or looked this up, or if you know this is true. We, I was talking about like the Houston offensive line um, mm-hmm. being pretty good. Like, is that is that true? Did we confirm that, or do you know that? I know their run blocking offensive line was was pretty good. Um, okay. Last year, I can tell you. Okay, so pass blocking, they were. This is PFF. Last year, they were 28th in the league. Okay. And, <laughs> um, run blocking, they were 29th. Okay, so I, wrong, I was wrong about the run blocking. So they were pretty. Yeah. Yeah, bottom of the barrel. I don't. I don't know where I heard that, or maybe I heard uh, something else, but. Yeah, it could have gotten better know. over the year, like the last four or five games or something. Could have been something yeah. like that. I don't know. All right, yeah. Well, I got to go Bryce Young in, in uh, all of this points. So that I think uh, part of the thing about Houston not taking, um, well, I've, obviously they got, uh, um, like they didn't take the receiver in in round one, mm-hmm. like we all thought they were going to. Also, so yeah, yeah. by way of trade didn't uh do what we thought they were gonna do and carolina who did they take they took someone in the second round didn't they yeah Uh, um yeah mingo yeah so i i like that they gave you know carolina got somebody to to throw to like i'm not Mm -hmm. feeling too good about that as well i mean obviously situations change and everything but i don't know i think stroud is kind of like the odd man out now yeah it it feels that way um i just think yeah bryce young i think he has a lot of potential being a high-end quarterback you know like mahomes like quarterback Uh, i know he's very small but again um there's guys that can kind of be exceptions to that rule like i think in basketball like i know it's a different sport but like steph curry Everyone was like, oh, yeah, like, we're not going to take him because he wasn't the prototypical size or something, you know, small guy. Yeah. He's still, like, 6'2", but, like, very skinny and small for, for the NBA, and he's, like, one of the best players ever, you know? It's just some guys can kind of rise above it, that's for sure. Um, 
and I don't know if I mentioned this, this is Superflex. I hope I did mention that. So um, this is for a Superflex League. So it comes to, to four. And I know we've been saying all along, like the three quarterbacks, I still think that's probably the way to go, which is what I'm going to do. But I mean, Brian, is there any argument for um, for not taking Stroud there and taking either Jameer Gibbs or JSN? I don't know. Like, I think um, I think you'd be like uh, overdoing it a little bit by doing that. I guess like obviously like both these guys were taken like uh, JSN went what twenty or something like that to Seattle. Yeah, twentieth. Um, yeah, and Gibbs obviously went even earlier, which no one. I don't think anyone was really thinking that. Um, yeah. So we know they're going to get used, and like we know what like a pass catching running back. Running, uh, running behind the uh, Detroit offensive line can do. Um, but there is still David Montgomery there, so I don't know. Like, I'm not worried about him as a player necessarily, but mm -hmm. I just feel like uh, – and then JSN is behind, you know, Tyler Lockett and Metcalf, even though they can, obviously they play different roles, and I think that's where you can definitely see where the success will be. But I think you still got to go with the quarterback – like, even if you're not a big C.J. Stroud fan, like, mm -hmm. I mean, he was taken second overall in the draft, and a lot of people thought he was going to go one, so. Yeah. I'm What's, sure a lot um, of people would have liked getting him at one. What would you value more in a super flex league? Would you value, like, a guy who finishes, like, QB 15, 16 every year, or a wide receiver that finishes, like, 15th, 16th, like, basically every year? What, what do you think is more valuable? Uh, I mean, the the wide receiver will play for longer, I would assume, because, like, if you're quarterback 15, like, you might not have, like, a long career, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I think if a wide receiver is playing at that level, they'll probably play, you know, multiple contracts. Well, so, I mean... I guess in the like, long... With that. Sorry, like like a guy like, like Derek Carr, I think was... I don't know if he was finishing that low, but he, he definitely had several years... Tannehill, yeah. you know, finishing it's there. It's true. You, yeah, it's true. You don't have to be that good, I guess. Or, the, yeah, I guess you would have to be a little worse. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I still just think the the quarterback, like, in super flex, like, I mean, it kind of depends on what your quarterback room looks like, I guess. Like, do you have just, like, a bunch of number two guys? Like, I don't know. I just imagine if you're picking at four, you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of, like, you're not doing well somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, quarterbacks like mean so much. So, mm -hmm. I okay. just think uh, I think you got to do it. Yeah. All right. So, one hundred and five. The three quarterbacks are gone. Bijan's gone. Who would you go, Brian? Who would you take there? Uh, I know this is kind of just like, yeah, the chalk. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like we've talked about this first round so much, where it's just like, yeah, yeah I got. I'm uh, on Jameer Gibbs right here at six. Yeah. Or sorry, five. Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a little bit different from what we might have talked about. We talked about probably JSN should be number five before the draft, and now the draft's mm -hmm. over. You know, um, yeah. Jameer Gibbs going twelfth overall is definitely, um, you know, that could that could change things up. To me, I, I still think I lean Jackson Smith and Jigba, but um, I'm not going to argue again with Gibbs at five. For sure. Um, but now it gets a little interesting. We're getting into like the receivers, right? Uh, all the first round receivers. Yeah. So Bree's on the clock here. We'll see who she picks. Um, are you yes, always. I have a question. Yep. In, in looking at this, you know, when I go into doing my live pick, you know, my uh -huh. goal is hopefully to get a quarterback, which, at, you know, my true pick is potentially not really going to happen mm -hmm. with the top three. Mm -hmm. um, would it be wiser to look at the remaining wide receivers that were picked in the first round or look at an, a quarterback, you know, look at Will Levis mm -hmm. instead? She'll take her answer off the air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, if... Uh, yeah. If the situation is as such that, you know, 
somebody would be in in this position. Yeah, so you your team has you're basically in the position where you have Aaron Rodgers, Kyler Murray and Tannehill, right? That's like your three quarterbacks. Right. Yeah. So I mean you're Kyler Murray is not going to play start the year. I mean right. you got Rodgers and Tannehill. Um I don't know, it's it's tough. Like it, it feels like a reach going for a quarterback here. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, man, I really need a quarterback, right? Like, and if you're not able to, I, I guess the the thing I would try and do is maybe like trade back, like maybe trade back to like the end of the first round. You know, this is a 12 team league. The league we're in that we're talking about is a 10 team league. So like trying to trade back possibly, and then still getting Levis um, is an option. I don't know, Brian, what do you think? Yeah. Or even try and like, shop that pick you know like ask the people in your league is always a good option too like try and figure out like what quarterback you think you can get for that pick you know or that pick plus something else or whatever mm -hmm. yeah M moving up is always an option uh, i know we've kind of talked about that so mm -hmm. there's yeah. a bunch of ways to go for it but give her give her the spiel mike about the um drafting best player available oh, i yeah i mean that's just always what i do uh i okay. draft best player available um not by and not, not for need yeah. yeah just because it, well one you don't want to reach for a guy like getting maybe reaching for levis here um and who knows like maybe like a lot of teams wanted levis in the first round but they just didn't um think they needed a quarterback or something but I, I just think it's best to always go for like best player available and then even if you have like a bunch of receivers and the best player available is a receiver it's like well i'll just add to my strength kind of and then i right. can trade a receiver i can trade a receiver during the season and i'm good you know yeah. so yeah a receiver and maybe a pick from next year or something mm -hmm. to try and get that quarterback or yeah okay but I, but I, I i bet you for most people a lot of people are going to want to move up into like the top six or seven picks of this first round, because I think after that it gets a little, well, I mean, maybe like the top eight or nine, but like, I, I'm sure for people that are in like 12 team leagues, um, the people that have like the 10th, 11th, 12th pick, they may want to move up into like this spot and then you can trade back with them, pick up a pick and then still get like Levis later on. And then it's not so much of a reach or something. Obviously we can't do that now, but um, I think that's a good strategy. Yeah. Okay. Like there it, it is. JSN. Yeah, I, I like JSN a lot. I mean, he's on the Seahawks, so he, we'll see how much he produces this year. But Lockett's going to be gone next year, um, and it's going to be Metcalf and JSN. And I think Jackson Smith and Jigba just like complements Metcalf really, really well. So I still think he's my wide receiver one. Brian, do you agree? Is he wide receiver one for you? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I, I really like the landing spots for like uh, for Addison and Johnston as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think we kind of talked about that last last time. Um, mm -hmm. I guess more Johnston than anything, um, just because you know we'll see like how he can complement Herbert basically. Yeah, um, be that third guy. Like it might be a slow start mm -hmm. uh, this year, but um, I don't know. I know I've kind of talked about him. I know he has like a dropping problem, and like that's always like a little bit worrisome. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I I feel like Addison's like kind of or sorry, uh, JSN is kind of like a, it seems like he's like the safe pick, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, and you're right. I do like like where he went. Yeah, for sure. It's not a bad spot, in my opinion. I mean, Gino's going to be there. People always talk about, like, Gino. Like, oh, we need to move on from him. It's like, no, he's only 32. Like, he can still play five more years. That's how, how long quarterbacks are playing these days. So um, so then I assume here, Brian, you're taking Johnston. Is that kind of your wide receiver, too? Or is it Addison? Um, I think, honestly, I think I, I'm going to go Addison here. Okay. Yep, Addison went to the Vikings. Um, I'm so fan of it. 
Yeah, Jordan Addison went to the Vikings. He's probably out of these four first round receivers who are going to go here. Um, he'll probably have the best like first year because um, he's going into being the wide receiver too on the Vikings. So uh, I like that, I like that spot. Um, and I'm going to be happy taking Quinton Johnston here if, at eight. You know, that's why I think that top eight, nine, you should feel pretty good if you have a top the first nine picks i'd say you should feel pretty good so um unless you throw a curveball here brian and take someone other than another receiver yeah no i think if if you're sitting at nine and you can get um will levis over zay flowers or you know charbonnet um or any of the other running backs whoever you like next i think you just play the game and uh, get Will Levis. So you, you would take Will Levis over Flowers here? I think so. Like, not that I don't think uh, Flowers is going to be good. I just don't know how, like, special he's going to be necessarily. Like, I do like... Uh, like, we've seen receivers be good with Lamar. Um, like, first-round guys. And obviously, they want to keep him there, but it's still kind of like... I don't know. We, we can, you know, we've talked about, you know, he's he, he's going to have a Mark Andrews problem, and who know what who knows what uh, Odell is going to do. Plus, they're not like very pass happy to begin with. It's mm-hmm. not like they don't throw the ball, but they're definitely run first. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think Will Levis here. Um, I mean, it, it is kind of a little bit format dependent, I guess, like depending on how deep your benches are and. Uh, in our league, I like the idea of the uh, we're, we're this is only our second year, so we're doing the taxi squad. So it's like, ah, you can just like leave him on there mm-hmm. and just let him let him sit for the season, see if he like turns into anything. Um, because mm-hmm. it'll, it'll be interesting to see what Tennessee does this year because definitely felt they weren't as good as we've seen them this past year. And it's like, I don't think everyone's just done all of a sudden. Yeah, well, I mean, you make a good argument um, taking Levis here. Did, sorry, did you say something? I thought you said something. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, taking taking Levis here, and um, I think I'd still lean Flowers, first round receivers. I mean, they just have such a good track record. I think Flowers, it's kind of like a, a JSN in the sense, like I think. He's, his skill set's going to play no matter what, no matter what situation he's kind of in. Uh, he yeah. may not be like a top tier receiver, but he could be. Um, and then he's going to give you kind of like a floor. I mean, I can see him having like a Marquise Brown type of impact for the, the Ravens coming in um, year one, just like that deep threat, big play guy. Uh, yeah. A little more than just a deep threat, but um, the big play guy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm at 110, and I didn't want Levis. I'm pretty happy taking Flowers here. That's for sure. Um, yeah, don't let any of these receivers kind of fall out of the first round. Basically, like is the the best advice I can give you because um, they're first round receivers. So um, now it's kind of where I just like I don't know how I feel about these last couple picks in a 12 team <laughs> league. Um, Charbonnet would have been the guy, but he goes to Seattle, right? I don't know if that's changed how you feel, Brian, or what you're leaning here. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, I kind of like, uh, yeah, I, it is like a little bit of like a tricky one for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of like, uh, but yeah, Char- Charbonnet going to Seattle, like, I don't like that. Um, not that he can't be good, but it's going to, you know, they're going to, now you just have two good guys on a team or like, you know, two perceived good guys. Like we saw Kenneth Walker be good enough with the workload and he can handle it. You know, they're not bringing in Charbonnet to not play. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to, they're just going to eat each other's lunch. Like, I mean, it is possible that they're both good enough to start, but mm-hmm. I don't know. That's pretty rare where you're starting two guys, two running backs from the same team on the same week, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. Um, honestly, I really like, 
uh, Kendra Miller. Like, I need to like do some more uh, re- research on him. I like where he went. I like that mm-hmm. he's only 20 years old. Um, and I mean, he's a third round guy. Is that mm-hmm. right? I think that's what I saw. Yeah, third um, round. 71st overall. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, like I. I mean that, that's early second round or third round rather. So I yeah. don't know. I kind I kind of like him. I don't know, but I mean, I, I feel like you're uh, you're gonna tell me that you have to like draft according to talent and not landing. No. Stuff. and uh... <laughs> I, I think Kendry Miller is talented though. Oh, yeah, I like Kendry Miller. Yeah, I don't really um, know a whole lot about him besides where he went. Um, mm-hmm. And. Yeah, like the potential there and everything. And I know, yeah, that he's a younger guy. I haven't like watched him or anything like that. And, but yeah. No, he's, I, he's, I think he's a good player for sure. Yeah. Like, I, I like Kendrick Miller a lot. Yeah. Is that who you're taking here? Yeah, I like him. Okay. Kendra Miller, it is. Um, yeah, I'm I'm out on Charbonnet being a first round pick. To be honest, it sucks because I liked him, but I think I'm out on him being a first round pick. I would probably go um, with this last pick. Uh, probably, if I'm going to take a running back, I think it's going to be A Chain. Yeah. Even even if um, you know Kendrick Miller's there, and then if I'm taking a tight end, I'm going to take Kincaid. Um, I'll take Kincaid here. Um, First round tight end going to Buffalo, and you hope, you know, he hope B- Buffalo starts to uh, actually use tight end a little bit more, and he becomes mm-hmm. maybe like the second weapon to dig. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I like that. Um, I don't know how you feel about that pick, Brian, or if you would have taken someone else. No, I one twelve. I, I was trying to figure out between uh, Miller and like I, I know. Uh, a chain like I, I just like everything that i've heard about him mm-hmm. um you know like he, he's going to a good offense like and uh he's really fast it, they're like a very fast team in general so yeah it, it seems like he's like gotten into like a good situation obviously he's behind mostert and uh jeff wilson but mm-hmm. um those guys only play like two games a year anyway so it's all yeah. good i think he's um, better than them problem is he's 185 pounds that's the biggest problem with the yeah chain. don't get hit and uh um, yeah i mean <laughs> we, we we talk about just what we, we talk about eckler and mccaffrey being small running backs and they're 200 pounds yeah so this guy's 15 pounds lighter yeah so we'll see i don't know yeah bulk up um Hulk, bolt up or bulk up? Um, <laughs> bulk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I see this is kind of how the first round should be. Maybe Kendry Miller like swapped with A Chain for my personal preference, but, um, you know, everyone's going to have their own. Kendry Miller going to New Orleans is intriguing. That's for sure. Um, yeah. But I definitely think that top 10 should probably be the top 10 um, for the most part in a super flex league. I don't really see. I, I, I couldn't argue anyone breaking into that top 10 for me personally, unless you want to, you know, drop Levis to like 11th or 12th or something. Um, but yeah, I think that top 10 is good. I think you should feel great if you have a top nine pick. And then after that, you got to hope, you know, maybe someone reaches for someone else or, you know, someone doesn't like uh, say flowers or something like that. And you somehow get them. But um, any last words, Brian, Bree, any last, any last words? no not really um yeah I, I agree with what you said about like the top like 10 guys i guess but i mean mm-hmm. something's gonna happen towards the end of that first round like if you play in a 12 team league like like nine like i yeah i'd say the top eight are way safer mm-hmm. i guess and yeah. then, and you know obviously like i think i really think like zay flowers could swap with addison or johnston like depending on like you can kind of be talked into any of those i feel like um so i mean just figure out what you what you value in these guys and go with your gut yeah for sure um 
I was going to say something and then I completely forgot. So I think we're just <laughs> going to end it. Um, but yeah, oh, about the receivers. I, I agree with like, you can kind of swap those three receivers around to like your own personal preference, you know? Um, again, draft capital, um, landing spot, take into account, but don't, don't let it be the be all end all, you know, of just, oh, this guy went here. Cause again, we talk about it with Garrett Wilson. People were afraid of him because he had Zach Wilson. He had Elijah Moore. And both those guys are like out of the picture now a year later, right? So yeah, um, it changes. Changes no. quickly. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, just before we go, let's, uh, let's mm-hmm. talk about Will Levis again for a second. Like just yep. as a quarterback. Like, so like, I mean, he was almost a first rounder, right? Like he was only like two picks outside of the first round. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really only one, technically two, but, you know, he was chosen Mm -hmm. 33rd overall. Like, Tennessee obviously moved up to get him. Um, And, yeah, I'm just kind of curious, like, how do you value him? Like, do you, like, I I know they kind of, like, talk about, like, second round, like, third round, like, quarterbacks and all this stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, why did they last kind of a thing, but... um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on Will Levis in general? Yeah, I, I still, I think I like Levis a little more than, than everyone does. I'm not like super high on him, but um, I think just because he's a second rounder doesn't necessarily, like, like for instance, if, if someone traded up in first round and took him 27th, that's not going to really change much between where he went, you know, 33rd overall. Um, I think he's a good player. I think he's going to a good team with a good coach. Um, that can kind of like play to his strengths. I mean, look at what Tannehill did for a couple of years there um, in Tennessee. Like he was basically broken when he left Miami, came to Tennessee, and he was putting up really good numbers for several, a couple of years there at least, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. He had a 33 touchdown year of seven interceptions. So um, that's really good. Um, and there's a lot of second round quarterbacks that have been successful. You know, Jalen Hurts. Derek Carr comes to mind. Uh, I'm sure there's a few more. Uh, I mean, Dak Prescott was a fourth rounder. Um, Russell Wilson was a third rounder. Like, there's yeah, I figured we were guys. Gonna talk, we were going to talk about yeah some of those like later round sort of guys mm-hmm. like, as we get into these videos because mm-hmm. there's definitely like a place for them on your bench. Like, yeah, because you could like obviously the chances are very slim. Like the further the later you guys uh, these guys get drafted. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people get it wrong. You know, we get it wrong. The NFL gets it wrong. I mean, look at Brock Purdy last year. Like, he was, he was, that guy was, uh, what did he have? Like five 20 point fantasy games and he was the last pick of the draft. Like, and sometimes it just depends on where you go. So I, I still like Levis. Again, that's why I'm not even going to argue. Like, I think it's a little high for him at like the 106, but if you, if you really, really need him or you just like, are absolutely terrible at quarterback, like maybe go for it, you know, like if you can't trade back at least knowing you're not going to get them later on. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You kind of have to shoot your shot at that, at, on that kind of stuff. Cause like you said, you're not going to get them later. Mm-hmm. Um, assuming you only have your second round pick. So, yeah. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you for watching. If you did, I think I'm just checking, yes, eight subscribers away from 150, which is a cool little, our next little um, milestone. Um, so appreciate and it. If you like on. the video, subscribe. Yeah, go ahead. Me and Bree are both going to uh, I think Bree already subscribed. Right now. No, I, I, I already I, did last week. Oh, Bree did. Yeah. I, well, I, I didn't. didn't. <laughs> Way to go. Not even subscribe to your own channel. Um, so we'll be seven away from 150. So we appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back looking at round.